accessing environment variables in Next.js is a little tricky. But in this video, I'm going to show you how we can load and access the environment variables using configuration module as easy as possible. We also discuss best practices for organizing your configurations, like creating custom configuration objects and manage different env files this is sakura dev channel and this video is part 12 of our nest.js full course so without further ado let's get into it okay let me first show you the problem let's create an env file that env and let's create a variable inside it i'm gonna call it db name and just set it to a random value let's save this and let's go to the main.ts file and here let's just log the variable using the process.env so just use the process.env and then put the name of our variable which is db name let's save this open up our terminal and run the server and as you can see here, we got an undefined in the console. So actually we can't access to the env variables in our Next.js project. So in order to fix this problem, we need to use configuration module of the Next.js. So we need to first install the configuration module npm i at Next.js and then slash config. And then we need to go to the app module our root module and here in the import section of the module we need to register the config module so here we're going to use the config module as you can see it comes from the nest.js slash config and then call the for root function and then we're going to pass in configuration object and set is global to true with this option we don't need to configure the config module in other modules of our application we can use it globally so now let's open Open up the terminal and go to the console of our application you can see here we already have the value of our env variables in the console you can see it here in the env file okay so with this easy way we can access to the env variables in our nest.js application so now let's talk about some of the best practices and other options for the config module so first let's talk about the variable expansions here as you can see we have a db name we can have another variable like url and then with the variable expansion we can use this db name for the ur variable so here just use a dollar sign and a query braces and we can use the db name here and then we can add something else to this url for example a slash and a username for example okay now let's save this and go back to our main.ts file and log the url variable if i save this you can see actually we can't access to the value of the db name variable that's because we haven't enabled the variable expansion for our config module so let's go to the app module where we configure the config module here we can use an option called expand variables and set it to true let's save this and now you can see this time we have access to the value of db name env variables and yeah this is called variable expansions in the config module okay so now let's go to our db config file where we have put the connection options for the type orm and here now let's log one of our env variable process that env that url let's save this and see if we can access to the env variables and if i scroll up here we can see we have an undefined here which means that we can't access to the env variables outside of the src directory so in order to fix this issue i'm going to create a directory inside the src directory and let's call it config and inside it let's create a db config file db.config.ts okay now we need to export a factory function which returns a object for our configuration module so let's go to the dbconfig.ts file and let's just copy the configuration object here and here we need to export a factory function export default just a anonymous function and let's set its type to postgres connection option and it will return our configuration object so as i said this is called factory function because factory's function actually returns an 
instance of a class or an object. So yeah, it's a fancy word for these kind of functions that just return an instance of an object or a class. Okay, so as you can see here, it just returned this configuration object. Now we can move these values into the env files. Actually, we should not put them inside our code base because if someone access to our code base, we can easily access to our database with this URL. So let's move these values to our env file and let's just put a URL and set it to these values. Now let's just create a port variable and set it to 3306, which is the port of the Postgres database. Now let's get back to our config file. And now we can use process.env.url and here for the port, we can use process.env.port. And since these variables are string, we need to turn the port to a number. So let's just put a plus before it to turn it to a number. We also need to change the path for our entities. We're going to come back here and fix that. But for now, let's just remove the DB config in our root directory and let's go to the app module and use our new db.config for initializing the type or module. So first we need to load it here in the config module. I set the load option. We need to set it to a list and we need to call the db config that comes from the config directory and then slash db.config file. Okay, now we can use this db config that comes from our new config file for initializing the type or module. So since this is a factory function, we need to use for root async function and then pass in configuration object. Here we're going to use use factory and then just pass the db config factory function let's save this also we have an error in our seeding file so i go to the seed.ts file that we have created in the previous episode since we removed this file we need to replace it with our new file so let's just go one level up and then inside the config directory we're going to load the db.config file and since this is a default export just remove these core braces and let's just rename it to db config okay and then here we're going to use the db config and here there is an important tip since this is a factory function actually a function that returns our configuration object we need to call this function and then spread the returning object and as you can see the error is gone so let's save this file and also let's go to the app.module file and just remove this line for importing the pg config from our previous file which is deleted now okay let's save this and as you can see now our application is running without an error and let's just remove the logging the url from the main.ts file okay now let's go to insomnia and let's send the get request to slash property which actually returns the properties from our database if i click on the send you can see we got an internal server let's get back to our project and here you can see the metadata for the property was not found and that's because here in the db config since we have moved the configurations from the root path of our application to the config directory now this path will not finally lead to our entities file so we need to fix that in order to do that we need to go one level up from the current directory since here we are in the config directory one level up is going to be the src directory and from the src directory with this pattern we can access to the entities files so we're going to use the path module of the node.js in order to go one level up from the dr name variable which is pointing to our the directory of the current file which is this file actually so here let's import everything as path from the path module okay now we're going to use the path here dot resolve past the dr name and in the second parameter we're going to use the double dot which refers to the parent directory okay so this function with these two parameter will return the parent directory of our current file which is going to be src directory and let's save this and now let's go to the insomnia and send a get request to our slash property and as you can see this time it works correctly and we have access to our database so now let me do a recap here first we need to create a db config file and put our configuration object inside a factory function which will return this object finally 
and then go to the app.module file and here in the config module first we need to load that factory function that returns a config object for type ORM and then here for the type ORM module we're going to use for root async instead of just for root function and then pass the configuration object and use use factory and pass that db config factory function and that's it for loading the configurations of the type ORM from our env variables now let's create another custom config object for our type ORM here let's create another file i'm going to call it db.config.production and then .ts okay so let's just go to the db.config.ts and copy the code here and paste them here now what we are going to do is to create two different config modules for different environments for the development environment we're going to use this config file and for the production environment we're going to use this config file actually we have a typo here so let's fix that config and that's okay so in the type rm section i've talked about why we should set the synchronized option to false in the production because if we set it to true in the production if we accidentally change one of our entities for example removing a column or removing an entity it will immediately delete that column with all its data from our data is permanently and we can't access to that data anymore so it is really important to set this synchronized option to false in the production environment so i just set it to false and here as you can see in our first config file we just set it to true because we are going to use it in the development environment so now let's go to our app module and here in the config module of our app module first we need to load the production db config so I just import it from this file as db config production and here for the use factory we're going to check if the process that env that node env equals to production we're going to pass db config production otherwise we just pass our previous db config which we're going to use for development environment so yeah in this way we can have access to different configurations for different environments okay so now let's talk about how we can use the config service in our nest.js application with the config service we can access to the env variables and also we can access to the custom con like the configuration that we have created in these two files db.config file and also db.config.production file so in order to use config service we need to inject it to the class that we are going to use it for example let's say we are going to use the config service in the app controller so we need to inject it inside this controller so here in the constructor we're going to say private config service and set its type to config service that comes from the nest.js slash config now we can use this config service in this controller for example in this get api let's return one of our env variables so we're going to use config service and call the get function and then we need to pass the name of the env variable we're going to use port here and let's save this go to insomnia and send a get request to the root path of our application you can see it returns the value of the port env variable okay now let's talk about how we can access to the custom configuration values so let's get back to our nest.js application and here in our custom configuration file first we need to use the register as function from the nest.js config to register this factory function for the configuration service so here we're going to use register as function that comes from the nest.js slash common and it takes two parameters the first one is going to be the namespace of the configuration so we're going to say for example db config dot dev okay and then in the second parameter we need to pass our factory function so let's just put our factory function here and let's close the parentheses of the register as function now we can go to the app controller here we can use db config dot env and then we can access any properties of this configuration object for example we can access to the type of this config object so let's get back to the controller and then after the namespace of the configuration we can use type here let's save this and go back to insomnia send the request to this endpoint and we get nothing in response and probably that's because we have misspelled the namespace of the configuration 
configurations and yeah let's fix that i go back to the dbconfig.ts and just copy that and paste it here okay let's save this and now get back to insomnia send the request to this api and as you can see we get the type property of our configuration file so yeah in this way we can use config service for accessing env variables and also the properties of our custom configuration objects so that's it for this episode of our nest.js full course and if this video was helpful for you please like share and hit the subscribe button so stay tuned for the next episode of this nest.js full course and have a nice time bye bye